Hi, welcome to this two-part series about how to take great shots of birds without a focused background like this one here. The key to this is understanding how to set the camera to control the depth of field. In this video, I'm going to cover the technical aspects about depth of field, but if you want to skip that and go straight to the practical stuff, I'll link it up here in the card or down below in the description and you can go straight to that now. First of all, what is depth of field? Well, it's the distance between the furthest and the nearest point of the image that is acceptably sharp. That is, we can't tell that it's out of focus. Depth of field can be affected by the acceptable circle of confusion size, which I'll cover later, the focal length, the aperture and the distance from the subject to the camera. As the distance from subject to camera increases, or the circle of acceptable confusion increases, then the depth of field also increases. However, if you increase the focal length or the size of the aperture, then this reduces the depth of field. Now don't worry if you don't understand any of those um, terms, I'm going to go into more detail in a short while. First of all, we're going to cover what the circle of confusion is. Now this might be a term that a few people have never even heard of. I'm going to put an image on the screen now that should help explain it. So you can see in this image that we've got a picture of a robin and a lens and then the, the flat line is where the sensor would be and that's where the image is focused to. Precise focus is only possible at an exact distance from the lens. At that distance a point object will produce a point image. Otherwise, a point object will produce a blur spot shaped like the aperture, typically and approximately a circle. When the circular spot is sufficiently small, it's visually indistinguishable from a point and it appears to be in focus. The diameter of the largest circle that is indistinguishable from a point is known as the acceptable circle of confusion or informally, simply as the circle of confusion. Points that produce a blur spot smaller than this acceptable circle of confusion are considered acceptably sharp. There are three main ways that we can control the depth of field within the camera. These are through the size of the aperture, the focal length and the distance from the subject to the camera. I'm going to cover all of these in a little bit more detail now. We'll start with aperture. This is normally indicated by an F number and this indicates the focal length of the lens, which is this distance, to the diameter of the aperture within the lens. When we talk about aperture, what we mean is the diameter of this hole in the centre of the lens. And we can make this larger, or we can make it smaller, and this is denoted again by the F number. What often confuses people is that the numbers are slightly illogical. The small aperture here is going to have a large F number, so this one is going to be something along the lines of F22, whereas at its widest, like this, it becomes an F1.8. As you decrease the aperture, and consequently the F number becomes larger, then you increase the depth of field, because what is happening is the light rays passing through the aperture are going through at shallower angles and then creating a smaller acceptable circle of confusion. This lens, when zoomed out to its full focal length, is 500 millimeters. That's a long focal length, and at this distance, it really reduces the size of the depth of field. Just to give you an idea of how shallow the depth of field can be with a lens like this, zoomed out at 500 millimeters with an aperture of 5.6 and the subject four meters away, the depth of field is just 1.9 centimeters, which is only just slightly wider than my thumb. As we increase the distance from the subject to the camera, we also increase the depth of field. Now, keeping these same settings that we had in the previous example, if we just move the subject an extra two meters further away to a distance of six meters, what this does is it increases the depth of field to 4.5 centimetres, which now would be the full width of a small bird. This equally means, though, that images taken at a close range are also going to have a shallower depth of field. 
Thanks for watching part one of this video. In part two, I'm going to put all of that theory into practice and show you how to get the best shots by controlling your depth of field. Don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. But for now, stay safe and I'll see you in part two.